Good morning from Oregon. Nah. I'm going to do a video today. It's going to be the first video in a series. I'm going to take my little multi-purpose machine. Uh, it's a little almost like a mill drill but it's also a lathe. Uh, I bought it to make uh, R9 crucibles on but it it's turned out to where I do just about all my molds on it. Not a bad little machine made in China. It's one of the older ones. It's pretty well built, heavy as a brick. Um, so everything I do on it is manual. So I'll reposition the camera and show you what I'm doing now and what I hope to do is put this machine on three axes of CNC control to where it will make my molds without me hand cranking every millimeter that it moves. So I'll zoom down and I will show the way that I have done this to make it repeatable because <laughs> as many molds as I've made I can't ever remember which way to turn the handle so I end up throwing a lot away. So this is a pretty much a hard stop system that I built. Um, the Y axis is this piece of all thread with, with two nuts and it clamps to the V ways with a bracket that I built. Um, the CNC will let me utilize about two and a half more inches of travel so I'll be able to cut a little bigger mold. So what I've started doing is I take the mold over in the small CNC engraver, I take the blank and I have cut patterns over there to where I just engraved the pattern of the mold that I'm going to cut and it is the correct dimension. Makes it a little faster setting this up because for every mold I make I, th I throw away two or three because I, I if I undercut them fine but if I go too deep or that a lot of them I'll just sell as, as uh, goofs and proofs and whatever so this is the axis stop for moving west and then this is the axis stop for moving east and so I have four hard stops that once I get it positioned then I can reasonably make mold after mold after mold of the same size and they are uh, pretty darn close. The one bad thing is setting the depth. Oh well, my light is in the way but I have to manually set the depth every mold so uh, I'm using um, stepper motors they're 425 uh, ounce inches of torque and these particular motors develop torque based on RPM so this is a motor mount that I have that the motor will melt, mount on this bracket and then I have built a base that will mount onto one of the travels. This is this is going to be the the Y travel. The motor mount will fit like so, and it will be slotted so it can move. And then to get more velocity, I'm going to use a uh, cog belt drive where. I have a two to one ratio and the cog belts I don't know if you can see them they have teeth this is just like gears and the belts go on they have a and they're captive and then the motor is gonna have to turn two RPM 
for every one revolution that the lead screw is going to make. Uh, it will just let me develop more torque because the secret to this machine to get better molds is to keep the gibs tight and the tight gibs are going to need more torque so I'll set up one of them. The trick one is going to be the z-axis and that is going to be a 4 to 1 ratio because it's actually pretty quick and I, I've got brackets built that will mount right onto the machine and then where the the hand wheel fine feed down goes will actually I'll have a drive shaft hooked to where the hand wheel goes and a stepper motor is going to control it and I'll do four revolutions for every one revolution of the hand wheel which one revolution of the hand wheel is fifty four thousandths of an inch which is pretty darn coarse so this will let me get a better smoother down feed on it so the control cabinet that's going to hold all the electronics and probably the computer uh, it was a, a wall storage cabinet I bought off of eBay nice unit and uh, I couldn't afford a NEMA 12 electrical cabinet that size uh, I got this one for like 80 some bucks uh, then the back panel this panel goes inside of there it just hangs in there it worked out really good so what I have is <clears throat> I'm going to parallel two DC power supplies that will actually be the power supplies to the motor and they're going to supply the uh, DC to the drivers uh, each one of these will be paralleled and so they'll be running as one common voltage output with double the current and then they are going to supply the power for three axes of motion which these are the motion controllers and they will drive the motors based on the, the commands uh, the board I'm using requires a 5 volt power supply so we have a 5 volt power supply the three fuses are the AC power supplying the 5 volt power supply and the two 36 volt DC power supplies the control board whoops this is going to control each one of the three drivers and it set up to use parallel port out of a computer but I have bought a USB adapter that actually opens things up a lot better to where I can use the USB port on my computer to get the the same or actually better results as far as timing and and uh, the different characteristics of my computer if there's something running in the background it can affect how it cuts using the parallel port where the USB is a lot faster um, I assume that's what I've been told and then like any good retired electrician we're gonna have because it is motion control and there are hands and fingers in the way this contactor here is going to interrupt all AC power to the unit based off of emergency stops to where I'll have emergency stop on the front of the panel along with different push buttons and selector switches and then I will have a resident e-stop right on the machine in case I get my stocking cap twisted up in the cutter or something I can reasonably within range hit the e-stop and kill all motion and all power to the unit so that's just a little bit of past history of working in industry as an electrician so 
I'm going to go put one of the drives less the motor onto the machine just this is the drive plate I made uh, yeah I, I know it overkill but the thing is, is I owned uh, two 14 foot long pieces of electrical grade aluminum that was 14 inches wide so I couldn't very well not utilize what I have so this has been laid out I uh, have it laid out I have the table here the cross slide I've already have it drilled and tapped this piece here will fit right on so I'm gonna real quickly I'm gonna pull the hand wheel off and this unit will just mount right up in there I have to pull the saddle lock out of it the travel it's gonna it will be repositioned to where it's still usable but really don't want it locked down uh, when it's under CNC control now I do use it locked down when I'm uh, making round molds because I only use the the Y travel and the one thing it's going to be a little learning curve for me is the X and the Y on this machine are different than uh, my little CNC machine because of just the fact this is a supposed lathe slash mill so this piece will just mount right up there with four uh, Allen screws I'll only use two because I got molds to make uh, so these just mount on there and then the pulleys these are going to have to be relieved but those will mount right on there that just came up against the key uh, this indicator will actually come off and the pulley will go all the way up there then when this is in place, these haven't been keyed yet, they have to go to the machine shop. The motor bracket will mount and this will be slided, slotted so I can have movement on this to, to tighten the belt. And then the little pulley will be on the motor and I'll be able to uh, tighten the belt. keep it snug which will make it more accurate and the little pulley will be right there and then it'll just drive and as it turns then the the slide will move so this one was relatively easy to do the end one was easy to do uh, its bracket it mounts right on the end of the tailstock and the motor will same slide system on this as the axis the tricky one is going to be this axis because there's actually going to be two parts and it is going to have a bearing mount and a shaft and it's going to have to turn the hand wheel so anyway this is the start the, the next video is going to be when I try to start this up and, and make it do something so this will be a conversion to three axes of CNC controlled motion on little central machinery
mill drill lathe unit. So until the next video. Well, here's a spaghetti mess. Uh, I'm just about to the point of putting a little power to this. I got to hook up the three servos, but it's obvious to me I should have went and bought new pan do it for this. I'm going to go ahead and uh, once I get it up and running before I, I start the machine into operation, I'm going to replace all that one inch wire wave or pan do it, whatever you call it, too. Uh, probably inch and a half by inch and a half. It, it'll it fit, but it's just a little bit over full. Uh, just makes it hard for troubleshooting later. I'm going to try to do all my troubleshooting uh, before it goes into the can out in the shop. So, anyway, that's just an update. Well, here's the last update. I'm driving the stepper control with a UC100. It's a USB conversion to replace a parallel port. And it really was easy to start up. I had more trouble getting the the uh, drives to run. The biggest problem was the fact I left the enables off of them and I wasn't sure I would be smart enough to figure it out. It's been a while, but uh, anyway, we've had a lot of success with it this evening, and uh, I've got my Mach 3 configured, and uh, I've got the three stepper motors there from left to right. There'll be the X axis, the Y axis, and the, the right motor is the up. Uh, I'll just do some manual moves. So we've got our X, Y, and Z. Everything is its pretty smooth. It's going to take some final tuning when the drives are on the motor and, and are on the, the machine and, and actually doing some work. Because when I put a cut program in the Mach 3 and let it run, some of the ones that cut really fast, I mean, i got to hang on to the motors. They're all over the place. So anyway, well, that's the last update until it's actually going to cut a mold.